Now that we have the login and sign up functionality in place, we are going to create a user in our Angular application with the login and sign up response data. And then we will use that user instance in our Angular application. For that, first we will create a user model in our Angular application. Let's go to VS Code. And in this model folder, I am going to create a new file and I'll simply call it as user.ts. And in this file, we are going to create a user class and we are also going to export it. Now in this user class, so let's make this U in caps. In this user class, we want to have some public and private properties. And we want to initialize those properties using the constructor of this user class. So instead of separately creating the properties and then initializing it in the constructor, what I'm going to do is here, I'll simply create a constructor. And in that constructor, we will create some parameters. For example, we want to have an email of type string. And if I use a public keyword in front of it, in that case, behind the scenes, a public property called email will be created. And that property will be assigned with the value which we will receive for this email parameter. This we already know from our previous lectures, right? So in this way, we are going to create some more properties. For example, we also want to have an ID property. So again, I'll use this public keyword first, and then I want to have an ID property and that ID property I want to assign with the value which we are going to receive for this ID parameter. And this is also going to be of type string. Then I also want to have a token property, but this property should be a private property because we don't want this token property to be accessible from outside this class. And this token, it is also going to be of type string. Now, why I'm making this token property as private is because we want to access the token, the JSON web token, which we are going to receive when a user logs in or signs up. So we want to use it in our application, but we don't want that token to be modified. So if we make it public, in that case, this token can be accessed from anywhere in our Angular application. And it can also be modified, right? But when I'm making it private, first of all, this token will not be accessible from anywhere outside of this class. And since it will not be accessible, it cannot be modified. Now we want to access this token from outside this class, but we don't want it to be modifiable. And that we will see how we can do that. Apart from this token, I also want to have another private property, which is expires in. So in this expires in property, we are going to save a date time value. And this expires in property will tell when that token is going to expire. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, I am making this token property as private because I don't want any other class modifying this token value but I want this token to be accessible from outside this class. So for that, I'm going to use a getter. So we can simply say get, and then we can create a property called token. Okay. And it should be actually outside of this constructor. Okay. So here we are creating a get property and this token here, remember that we are creating it like a function, but it is actually a property and we are defining this property using this get keyword. That means it is a get property. It can be accessed from outside this class, but it cannot be modified. When we also create a set property like this, in that case, this token can be set. Now from within this get method, I want to return this dot underscore token property. So this underscore token, it is our private property. So whenever a user wants to access this token, he can access it using this token property. And it is a get property. And inside this token, if we want, we can also allow users to set the value for this token. But here, we don't want to allow the users to set the value for this token. So we are not going to specify any setter for that. We are only going to specify a getter. That means outside of this class, we can access this token, but we cannot modify it. And how can we access this token? We can access this token using this getter. All right. Now, before we return the value of this token, we also want to check one condition. 
So here I will write if and in the condition we will check this dot expires in and since it is a private property I'll also use underscore in front of it. Okay, so if this dot expires in exist, that means if this property exists on this user and if I use a not operator in front of that, so that means if this expires in property does not exist or if this dot expires in if it is less than current date and time for that we can use new date constructor so this new date it will return us current date and time so if the expires in is less than current date and time that means the token has already expired okay so again if expires in property does not exist or if the expires in property exist but it is less than the current date and time that means the token has expired so in that case from here we will simply return null for the token otherwise we will return the actual token value i hope this logic is clear let's save the changes in this file now let's go to auth service file and here as soon as a new user signs up or an existing user logs in, we want to create a new user object with the response data which we will receive during sign up or login request. And also remember one more point that when a new user signs up, he will be automatically logged into our application. He does not need to log in again after sign up. Okay, only when he logs out or if the token has expired, then the user will have to log in again. Also, the new user which we are going to create here, it should be accessible from anywhere in our application because this user object is going to be the currently logged in user. So we might want to get the data of the currently logged in user from anywhere in our application. Okay, so for that, what we are going to do is inside this auth service, we will create a subject and I'll simply call it as user. You can name it anything and it is going to be a subject and in order to use this subject we also need to import it from rxjs and this subject it is going to emit some data now what type of data this subject is going to emit it is going to emit a user object so here i am going to use user class and again in order to use this user class we need to import it from model folder user.ts file okay so this subject it is going to emit a user data a user object and here we also need to use new keyword in order to create this subject okay and this should be equal to all right so here we have created a user subject now when this subject is going to emit the user data well when the user signs up at that time we are going to receive some response so we are going to receive the details of the currently signed up user so what we are going to do is to this pipe method we are going to pass another operator called tap and in order to use this tap operator again we need to import it from rxjs slash operators so here i'm going to write that import statement and we want to import tap from rxjs slash operators okay now using this tap function we can tap into the response so to this step function we need to pass a callback function and this callback function is going to receive the response okay so we are going to tap into that response and using this step operator we can do something once we have received the response without modifying the response so here what we want to do is once this post method has returned us a response in that response we are going to have some user data like the user email the json web token the expiry time etc so with that data we want to create a new user by calling the constructor of this user class so here what we are going to do is we will say new user so here we are calling the constructor of the user class and there this constructor is expecting a value for email id token and expires in so we need to pass these values so for the email here we are going to receive the response in the response we are going to have an email property right in the same way in the response we are also going to have this 
local ID and this local ID is basically the user ID. That's what we learned in our previous lectures. So we want to assign this local ID to this ID property of this user class. Then we also want to pass the JSON web token. So for that we can say response.id token. This ID token is going to store the JSON web token and we want to assign that JSON web token to this underscore token property. And finally, we also need to pass the expiry date and time. Now, when we are going to receive the response from this post request, there the expires in property, it is storing a value in second. But here, this user class, it is expecting a value of type date time for this expires in property. So for that, what we need to do is, based on the expires in property, which we are going to receive in the response, first, we will convert it to date time value. For that, let me create a variable. I'll call it expires in timestamp or simply TS. Okay. And to get the timestamp for that expired time, what we can do is first we will get the timestamp of current date and time. And to get the timestamp for the current date and time, again, we can use new date. So this will return us the current date and time. And we want to convert this current date and time into a timestamp. So for that, we will say dot get time. Okay, so it will convert the current date and time into the timestamp, the current timestamp. And to that, we want to add the expires in time. So here we will say plus, and then in the response, we are going to receive the expires in property. It is going to store the expiry time in seconds and it is also going to be a string value. So first we need to convert it to a numeric value. So for that, I'll simply add plus in front of it. It will convert that string value into number. And since this value is in seconds, we need to convert it into milliseconds. For that, I'll simply multiply thousand to it. And this is going to return us the timestamp of the expiry time. Now this timestamp we want to convert into date and time. So for that, again, I'll create a new variable. I will call it expires in and this is going to store a date time value and to convert this timestamp into a date time value again i'll use new date constructor and to this we will pass this timestamp so this date constructor will convert that timestamp into a date time value and that we are assigning it to this expires in variable now let's pass this expires in variable for the expires in property of this user class Okay, I hope this logic is also clear. So here we are creating a new user. Let's go ahead and let's store it in a variable. Let's simply call it as user. And now what we want is once this user is created, we want to emit this user object using this subject. So for that, all we have to do is we have to say this dot user, which is a subject dot next so using this next method we can emit some value from an observable right now what value do we want to emit here we want to emit this user object so every time a new user will sign up in our angular application after the user has signed up and we have received the response that new user will be created using this user class and then it will be emitted by this user subject and then it can be accessed from anywhere in our angular application we want to write the same logic when a user tries to log in at that time also we want to create a new user and we want to emit that user now we can go ahead and we can write the same logic for login also but here what i will do is just like we have created this helper function handle error in the same way we'll also create another helper function and i'll call it handle create user you can name it anything and for this method let's say we are going to receive the response and now i will cut this logic from here and i'll paste it inside this method okay let's save the changes and now let's go ahead and from here let's call this handle create user so here let's simply say this dot handle create user and when we are calling this method we also need to pass the response object okay 
let's save the changes and now let's do the same thing for login also so i'll copy this and here also after we have passed the sketch error operator after that let's also pass tap operator okay so the same logic will also get applied to this login with this let's save the changes so here we are creating a new user based on the response data which we are going to receive from sign up request or login request now we are going to use this user to show or hide some of the menus in our angular application based on if the user is logged in or not and that we will do in our next lecture this is all from this lecture thank you for listening and have a great day